Hi, I'm Mufida Halabeshan. This is the first of a number of videos that John and I, Mufida, are putting together on my journey with basal cell carcinoma, or BCC. So this is the first video where I talk about how I found out I had basal cell carcinoma and the diagnosis. How it all started? Well, in late 2020, beginning of 2021, I started noticing a really tiny, shiny bump right in here, basically. Didn't think much about it. We all get little shiny bumps on our faces, all over our body once in a while. Fast forward in 2022, January, I was swimming with a friend. We were finally getting out a little bit after COVID and a friend of mine noticed it. And I know I had been noticing it and scratching it because it was bothering me hitting my eyeglasses. So in the summer of 2022, decided I should go to the doctor and have it checked out. So I call my doctor and my doctor's office and try to make an appointment. I could only get an appointment six weeks later and it wasn't even with my doctor. And I had three things to ask about and this was one of them. So I go and go through all the three questions that I had, a prescription renewal, etc. And then he looks at it, he says, oh, that's BCC. We'll give you a referral to the dermatologist and uh, they'll take it out. And I thought, oh, thank goodness. I didn't, didn't know what BCC was, but I was happy that it would be taken care of. What I didn't know is when the referral came, it would come five months later. So fast forward, we're in 2023, end of February, beginning of March, I have my appointment. I'm very happy to meet my dermatologist and finally get this thing taken out because it's not only budding into my glasses, it's bleeding. And thankfully for work, my camera's on this end so nobody sees the bleeding or the scabbing, uh, even though it's really bothering me. So I go into the dermatologist, I'm wearing a red shirt. I'm really, really excited because I'm getting rid of this thing. And I tell him it's okay if he gets blood on my shirt, it's red already. And he laughs and thinks it's very funny. But then he explains to me that it doesn't work that way, that they have to do a biopsy, although it looks like, and this is where he says basal cell carcinoma. And I went, w w wait, wait, what did you just say? What was that last word? And he says carcinoma. And I'm like, oh my God, this says skin cancer. I did not realize it until that moment. And he tells me that he's going to do a biopsy. A biopsy is when he numbs the section uh, of the tumor before he takes a piece of flesh and he will send it to analysis and they will tell him if it confirmed that it is basal cell carcinoma. Now he puts in a stitch in this tiny, tiny, and I mean really tiny incision and there's dangling string from it, which ended up really bothering me for the week and a half later where it's catching on my glasses. When I wake up in the morning, I'm rubbing my eyes because it's long healed after about three, four days and it's really bothering me. So I had to wonder about why they would put a stitch on something so small that a Band-Aid would have worked much better. I get a phone call from him about 10 days later about the results of the biopsy and it's a phone call and I'm it's at the end of my work day and he tells me it is basal cell carcinoma I'm floored but then he tells me I have two options and he had given me a pamphlet which just briefly touched on treatments for different types of cancers and I had looked at it and he says you have two treatment options surgical treatment options one of them is wide local incision and that essentially means that they take up to four millimeters right off the bat around the tumor including the tumor. Now you have to remember the tumor by then at uh, is five millimeters wide and it's about five millimeters away from the corner of my eye so it's like right here. There's not a lot of room to take four millimeters out and then he tells me that there's no guarantees with the wide local. 
And then the second option, Mohs surgery, Mohs as in Mohs the grass, will only take a tiny amount around the tumor as well as the tumor, and then they will take up to two, three, three millimeters only if needed, if there is cancer in that particular area. So basically they take a, a, uh, the tumor and a millimeter around, and then they run tests on all the sections of the tumor. And if on this side they see cancer, then they will take a little bit more here, but not everywhere else. So in this way, they take the least amount of flesh out and they can guarantee 99% for up to five years that they've removed all the cancer. He said there's a catch though. You can get the wide local surgery right away and in Nanaimo, or you have to get the Mohs, which he recommends, you get it in Vancouver, and it's an eight months to a year and a half wait. And I'm trying to digest this on the phone. Uh, so I am writing this down as he's talking really, really fast and trying to understand what he's saying. And then I had read Mohs and, and the wide local surgery on the pamphlet, but nothing was mentioned in the pamphlet about delays. Now, my tumor has been growing pretty fast in the last year, and it's really close to my eye. So I ask him to repeat everything again, and I'm confirming my notes, confirming that I'm understanding what he's asking me to choose from. And I'm thinking to myself, um, I can get disfigured very quickly or slowly. So I feel like I'm caught between a rock and a hard place. And I basically choose Mo surgery because it gives me time to think and process and maybe come up with another plan. I'm, I'm really, uh, upset because I'm alone here. I'm on that phone and he's gone through the stuff really really fast So I'm, I'm barely digesting it and This delay was I was blindsided by this delay uh, completely blindsided so I did tell him I would choose the Mohs and uh, he tells me that there'll be a follow-up ap appointment and because I have now one basal cell carcinoma, or BCC, I have a 40% chance of getting another one or more. Uh, so he books a full body scan that his office is going to call me about. And he tells me he's going to make the referral for the surgery, the Mohs surgery in Vancouver, and his office will take care of that. I tell my friends eventually, and they're very compassionate and kind. And some of them are, have already had basal cell carcinoma, not on their face or anywhere near their eye, but they've had it removed with wide local surgery. So not as big a deal. And some of them start asking me about spots on their face and skin. Is this basal cell? Is this whatever? And I said, I, I, I really don't know. I'm, I'm not a dermatologist. I'm just learning all of this myself. And I also tell them eventually as the year goes on that I, I discovered that Google Lens, which is an app, allows you to be able to do some diagnosis on those spots that you have by taking a picture and it'll analyze it. And I know Google Lens developers worked with dermatologists, so it has been vetted somewhat. I wouldn't rely on it as a substitute for going to your physician or going to a dermatologist, definitely make an appointment if something looks suspect. So my advice to everyone who basically may have sunburned as a child, make sure you put a sunscreen. If you have children yourself, make sure you put sunscreen on them because you know your kids are not to blame or <clears throat> be judged when they have skin cancer because the parents left them out in the sun. And that certainly was the case in my childhood because my parents uh, grew up in an era where uh, copper tone was telling everybody, don't be a pale face. So if you would like to know more about how I was able to treat my basal cell carcinoma, because as you can see, it's no longer there without surgery or the healthcare system, the BC healthcare system, please watch the next video. And if you would like to support myself and John, 
in making more videos that where we can share information, please hit subscribe. Bye.